Hello guys and welcome. Now today we will be answering the question of how to import 3D files from other CAD systems and from neutral file formats, including SDL imports. Uh, let me just start by saying that I really do think Alibre is the best solution for professionally using parametric mechanical CAD. It's missing a few tools compared to the uh, big names in in the industry but for a small to medium company it has everything you need and for a large company it has a fully featured uh, scripting environment where you can develop your own tools well, I, I think that in that sense uh, it's a pretty heavy hitter but you know not everybody uses the same cat so what happens when you need to collaborate with somebody who's using a proprietary card like SolidWorks or um, you know Creo or whatever so that's what we're going to be checking out today. And without further ado, let's get to it. So first thing we're going to do is we're going to import a step file. Uh, now, step files are uh, just text files that have directions on how to recreate that geometry. Let's uh, click on the step file that we're going to open, hit open with, and just select the notepad. Right, so you see that we've got quite a bit going on here, and here's here's the business end, right? Spherical surface, 0 0.4999, and all that, and all those nice coordinates and spline curves and commands on how to recreate the geometry. So that's what a step format is. Now this one is 13 and a quarter <laughs> megabytes, right? So when I try to open it. Um, I get this dialog box. If you want to know what everything here means, uh, I, I do strongly suggest you click on that little uh, question mark icon and you go to this page and you read up on all of these options. Um, I've set mine the way I like them, so I'll just hit OK. And I'll just leave it on screen, right, to see how a Ryzen 7 5800 is my processor, uh, 5800H, it's a laptop. I've got uh, 32 gigs of RAM, and I have a semi-decent RTX 3060 mobile. So with that spec, you see how much time it's taking to open a 13.25 megabytes file. Right? And the reason is there are a lot of commands. Libre needs to execute them one by one uh, and recreate that entire part. Now, as soon as it does that, you get this um, dialog box. And you see that uh, I have some parts that were imported with no errors. And I have some parts where uh, they were imported with some errors. Now I can check the uh, part reports and analysis reports and uh, you know all of that. It's pretty useful if you want to know why something is failing, right? But uh, at this moment I have imported my file and this is something that uh, Alibre does very often for me. Uh, when I'm importing step files or importing anything external. Um, when it's an assembly, I need to edit something and everything is regenerated and I go back to my assembly and we're good to go. If it's a single part, what will typically happen is a blank screen will open and I need to hit generate all, sorry, regenerate all. And then I can see the part that I just imported. So this is a, a few parts I made for my global parameters video. Right? I just want to say that the process is the same for any other uh, neutral file format, including OBJ, IGS, and all that, except for STL. We'll, we'll see STL uh, at the end of this video because it's a more involved process. Uh, but let's say that you're working with somebody who's using SOLIDWORKS, right? So what I have here is a design I made ages and ages and ages ago of a dual axis solar tracker for photovoltaic panels. Again, you see that we're, we're getting the exact same dialogue for import, although 
I'm opening an SLD ASM file, SolidWorks assembly file. Now, for SolidWorks assembly files to be opened and work, you need to have the assembly file and the referenced parts. It's the same if you try and open it in SolidWorks itself. So you see here again, mostly without errors, and uh, it's kind of obvious that there are a few parts missing, right? You see the lines here, you don't see the part. Now, if I right click and click edit here, everything is regenerated and I can take a look. This is a dual access solar tracker, pretty large one. And this is where you would put your uh, hydraulic arm and this is the base that can rotate oh yeah well it's not assembled now this is a good uh, this is a good thing to know assembly constraints do not come in right you, you don't get the assembly constraint uh you only get the geometry but uh as soon as you get the geometry and you can do whatever you want with it and let's uh, also note that this is not without issues for example this is supposed to be a tube thingy that's that's how it was on the tracker right it was a tube that uh, had you know like this smooth change in diameter and it was threaded both sides now i did design this in solid work in solidworks ages ago and here's what i'm talking about we can't see the part i regenerate all and now we can't see the part so this was threaded all the way through and you can clearly see that it hasn't worked hasn't come in correctly by the way this is also a very very old solidworks version if i'm not mistaken 07 i think uh but for the most part uh, the parts have come in and they are perfect and they're very very uh, usable and you can save them and uh you can add to this for example i can select the surface and i can you know, uh, I can project this in and I can make a second circle and say, well, these two are equal. And they're at the distance of 45 millimeters. And I can punch a hole through it. And now we've got two holes here, right? So these, after they come in, they are completely usable 3D files you don't need to do anything more to start uh, editing them and this is uh, true for solidworks and for all other proprietary cad systems that we're going to show uh, you can take these parts and you can edit them so this was the solidworks example let's do another example with um, solid edge this is the beginning of a uh, of a of the uh, rod for a hydraulic cylinder and this area is threaded. There you go. Solid edge file, right? Dot par in the uh, file extension. So this is a solid edge part, and I can open it up and do whatever I want with it. And I can even save it. And if I save it, I'll be prompted to save it as a Nalibri part. And as soon as I turn it into a Nalibri part, I can do whatever I want with it. Or I can start editing it and then save it, whichever way. Other examples? Well, we've already seen some examples of pro-engineer parts, like that piston was a pro-engineer part. Uh, let's see another pro-engineer part, a bit more involved and intricate. Okay, so this is the body for a plastic lira. Lira is a violin-like traditional instrument here in Crete. The part was designed in Pro Engineer uh, by a good friend of mine, not by me, and uh, we worked on making the molds to uh, make these out of plastic. And now here it is, .prt file extension. This is a Creole part. Well, Pro Engineer Wildfire 3 when we designed this. But it's called Creo now. So you've seen that we can pretty much do whatever we want, right? Um, I do want to stress the fact that not everything is going to go perfectly every time, right? So this is an inventor part. It's a BT40 BT uh, tool holder for a CNC spindle, right? And let's see, this has given me trouble in the past. Again, this has 
threaded features designed in 3D and that does not always translate very well. Okay, again, I can't see most of it, but if I go and regenerate all, I will be able to see it eventually. Updating topology, it's a heavy, heavy little file, it seems. And I already see some errors creeping up in this general area. There you go. There you go. Um, I wonder if this is a separate model piece that I can... No, this is an entire lump. And uh, now for the SDL import. Well, um, the SDL import is a bit more involved, right? So, so if you see here, I have made a uh, an STL of the iBeam uh, we created for the iBeam trolley series. So um, in order for me to import it, I need to go into a new part, actually. And I want to go into my scripts launch it and I want to use this STL import 3 right and as soon as I run this I get a message saying that I need the github STL to STP script first right uh, but then I can go ahead and find it and uh, let's go into it yeah there it is, and I'll open it, and my output file. So what this is going to do, it's going to create a, a step file, right, from that STL. And then it's going to open up that step file. See, I get the import dialog. I hit OK, and it's going to try and load that IB. And I can turn this off now, and and it's it's it opens it up in in a separate file, right? Again, you need to regenerate all to see it, but there you go. There's my iBeam. Uh, you can clearly see it's structured like an STL file, but it is a step file. Uh, by the way, this this result is pretty much exactly what you would get if you would uh, bring the STL into FreeCAD, uh, create a body from that surface, and then save as a step file. You would get the exact same result, this faceted step file, which you can definitely uh, edit. For example, I can punch a hole right here through the entire thing, and then save it as a Malibre part. Right. Right, there you go. So that's how you import files in the Libre, uh, both neutral file formats and from uh, other proprietary CAD systems. Sometimes the import procedure doesn't go off perfectly, but every single time you can definitely uh, work with the result and uh, patch it up and uh, do something with it. And it's a hell of a lot faster than designing from zero although usually if it's a newer uh, if it's a newer version it should go off without a hitch uh, all of these files i showed you solidworks pro engineer they were from you know more than 15 years ago so maybe that is why the imports didn't go perfectly um, i hope you liked it uh, if you did hit the like button and subscribe for some more videos like this and i hope i see you in the next one